Thank you, Bob. Thank you very much. Really appreciate that. Thank you for letting me be here tonight. It's really an honor. I, I love this group. It's really uh, amazing the, the things that they're studying and, and you know, consciousness is, I think, one of the most critical things for us to get a better handle on and to study. Um, so anyway, I just uh, want to thank you guys for being here, taking your time on a Tuesday night to, to be here and, and uh, you know, look at this, this subject. I um, wanted to say, first of all, a little bit, what we're going to talk about is, you know, what death can teach us about life. And it might sound a little bit morbid, but I'm excited to talk about this topic. <laughs> <laughs> and you might think, well, what, what's the deal? I mean, uh, this has made this this topic has been near and dear to me for my my whole life. Um, and the reason is my mom, when she she had a near death experience when she was nine years old, and she shared that with me growing up, and I've just it was made a huge impact on me as far as just what she. Um, what she learned from that, you know, experience and what she what she took from it, and so I've been kind of on a quest. Uh, interviewed several people who had near death experiences, and I just I'm really fascinated by the insights, the lessons that they have to provide. I think that death provides a lot of insights about how to live life. It's like kind of the mirror image part of the circle, you know, if you will. And so I uh, and included in you know in the book and talking a lot about what there is to learn. I mean, there's a lot to learn. Um, and also, you know, what there is to, um, just basically insights and lessons on how, how we can live, you know, life more, more full out in, in our, in our journey. And so, uh, anyway, just let me, uh, since we're going to spend some time together, let me, is it okay if I spend a little bit of time just sharing a little bit about myself? And, um, so my name is Jim Holzknecht and I, uh, just, authored this book here, Midlife Playbook, which is going to be released in uh, early December on Amazon. And we'll I'll share more about that later uh, toward the end of the night. We'll have links to be able to do that. But uh, um, I really am committed that people play full out in the second half of their life. I mean, they're really their whole life. But I mean, because I'm in my midlife, I this is a topic that is really interests me. And, and, you know, I've gone through a lot of things in my life, especially in midlife. Midlife was the point in my life where, um, you know, I was, I faced the death of my sister, faced the death of my parents, and uh, was really forced in a new way to confront the fork in the road, right? There was like, I could, kind of like a train going down the tracks, I could see the, you know, almost predictable future, the predictable future just heading down there, you know, going the way it's gonna go, and if I didn't make some changes, um, it was just going to keep going the way it was going, and I was committed to kind of go into a new, different direction, a little bit uh, scarier, because you know, unknown and and uh, something I hadn't really uh, tried before. But it was something that I felt like it was just up for a bigger game, up for you know, playing a different stage, just being um, uh, playing more full out in the second half of my life. Um, so my and my sister's death was a big wake up call. Like just you know, whatever you want to do, be or have. The time you have left, you know, get to it. Because um, every one of my, m with my parents and my my sister, died very suddenly. Like my sister had a, a brain aneurysm, and uh, she was actually two years younger than me when she died. At the time, um, she uh, she had a brain aneurysm was and very very fast. My mom died of a sudden heart attack in the middle of the night, and um, and, and my father had a really fast acting cancer, um, pancreatic cancer that went from like original diagnosis to, to um, death was in like a month, you know, wow. so we did hospice and all that. And actually we have a hospice nurse here and I'm really grateful because we're actually going to talk a lot about a lot of these insights. Um, and I'm going to talk a lot about uh, Bronnie Ware. I don't know if you're familiar with her work, but uh, she was a hospice nurse in Australia. And she, through her work, she studied um, the people that she was with and she asked them questions about what they regretted in their life you know if there's anything that they could do over again do over what would they want to do what would they most want to do and, and change and and then she blogged about it and then that led to a book that she wrote that was basically the top five things that top five regrets people will talk more about that but um anyway Lori, thank you for the work you do because uh the hospice person that uh, I had experienced to just made a whole huge difference in that experience 
and um, helping my father transition to whatever's next for him. And uh, I was just really, really grateful for, for having that. And your work is profound, it makes a huge difference. So thank you, yeah. All right, well that's, uh, so speaking then of um, Arnie Ware's work, let's take a look at one of the first, so lessons from the Indies we talked about. I wanna talk about the first, I call them the other F words, right? The other F words that we can learn from that. And the first one, yes. so what I'm, you know, one of the things in a lot of the people that I've spoken with that they really got clear on was, you know, um, what they were here to do. They had like a sense of a, a purpose that they didn't have maybe before their experience. And they also seemed really grounded, you know, like they were really confident in themselves and where they were going. And I was like, wow, that, you know, I don't necessarily want to have the experience of the near death experience, but I want to have that, you know, that sense of, of focus and clarity. And so, uh, you know, in, in researching and in talking with people to really look at what, um, how does someone get, you know, what's, uh, what's important to get focused basically? What, what is it that, uh, you know, we should put our attention on? And one of the things that I've discovered for me is uh, when I'm not focused, I'm spending a lot of time thinking about emphasizing the things that I don't want, right? Instead of the things that I do want. And, and so it's just sort of flipping that, like getting, I talked about her, The Five Regrets of the Dying by Bronnie Ware. She's a hospice nurse in Australia. Um, so yeah, so the first one we're gonna look at is uh, and so from focus, we can really, from Bonnie Ware's work, what I wanted to transition to this is, you know, we can really get an, a better idea of what focus looks like by maybe looking at some folks at the end that maybe didn't have it and, or, you know, wishes, wish that they did. And so one of the things is I wish um, I'd lived a life true to myself. And so she goes on by saying, you know, I, I don't know, in your guys' life, like I, growing up, just felt like I had a lot of expectations. You know, there's a lot of things that, um, and whether it was, some of it was just, a lot, most of it in fact was just imagined. You know, I just thought that that was how I needed to do things or what was expected of me. Um, I ended up spending a lot of time and energy going to law school because I thought that that was, you know, what was expected of me. And my my dad, you know, it was interesting when I when I decided to, to leave that, I, I, my dad was like, I don't, I'm not sure why you decided to do that anyway. And I was like, well, I thought that's what you wanted me to do, you know, whatever. But he, he was, you know, so sometimes we get mixed messages. We think we, we have a certain task, whether it's the, maybe the people in our lives, our parents or, um, uh, you know, people that we love do have those expectations or want to live, have us live maybe some of their un, unfulfilled dreams um, and have some expectations about that. And then we, we, inter, we internalize that and, you know, beyond, beyond belief, uh, what, you, what I produced with um, Becky Hayes, there's a lot of subconscious beliefs that we inherit. We're in what Bruce Lipton calls a hypnagogic state. When we're really young, we're basically susceptible, like we are when we watch TV, to um, to, tra to be. We're in a trance essentially, and so we download these programs without our you know knowing about it, and we carry them with us. So a lot of times, these can be like you know programs that we just inherited, and we don't even know why we have them, we just kind of feel like we have you know, an expectation about something or that we should be doing something. And I don't know if y'all have that, you know, like, how many can relate to, yeah. to that? Yeah, there's, like, there's like some kind of uh, uh, idea about not being true to yourself, not really living your true gifts, you know? There's something, there's something yearning to get out that's, um, that hasn't been realized yet something like that. And so, um, yeah, focus and clarity. Um, what I've really discovered for myself, especially too, is that I'm finding that this is, this is a, a choice. I talked about focus, like choosing what I focus on, choosing what I choose, you know, do I focus on what I don't want? 
which is just gonna make more of what I don't want continually show up, or do I wanna focus on what I, what I do want and put my emphasis on that? So that t that's a choice. And so I could think of, you know, and a lot of these people that were talking, this is the most common one, by the way, that's what was number one, but you're saying that they all wish that they had made some different choices you know, it's sort of, sort of the incremental choices that we that we make throughout the throughout our lives that add up. You know, over time, then we're before we know it, we're like, oh, I was just spending my most of my time focused on the wrong thing, or had my ladder against the wrong wall, or whatever. Um, so the next one is, I wish I hadn't worked so hard, and this was fascinating to me. That now, you know, she. She had interviewed, um, obviously, males and females, but and the females that she interviewed were um, not the primary breadwinners, you know, in, in the family in Australia, but of the males that were, I mean, basically 100% of the males that she talked to, 100% of them, all of them that she talked to, wish I hadn't worked so hard. That blew me away. Like, so that's a pretty common thing. I mean, for, for a guy, I mean, I can relate to that. Like, there's responsibilities, expectations about what you think you, need to do and um you know so so a lot of these guys you know spent a lot of time away from their their family and their kids just because they they felt like they needed to work and yet at the end that wasn't really what mattered right it was like i wish i'd spend more time with my kids i wish i had gotten to know them i wish i'd gone to the recitals and the the games and you know whatever that they were interested in and really gotten to know them and so that's uh that's that one. The other one was, I wish I had the courage to express my feelings. How many feel self-expression kind of, it's not as full out as you'd like it to be? You know, <laughs> that's definitely true of my, in my case. Um, yeah, I spent a lot of my life just, I was terrified to get up in front of people. I was um, really, really uh, didn't want to share, you know, and the more personal it was, no way, I'm not sharing anything. Like, and so there's a lot of like suppressed self-expression. I, I felt like it was, I had things to share and I had, um, so people really didn't get an opportunity to connect with me on that level. Cause I think that um, it's kind of a, when you're willing to share yourself and be vulnerable, that's actually a lot stronger than you know, the stiff upper lip. It might, what I found, that's what I'm finding more and more. And so, there's a lot more strength in kind of in vulnerability and being able to express yourself. And so being willing to kind of go through the eye of the needle and, and <laughs> do whatever it takes to get in that space where you're going to be open and vulnerable and not really sure what's going to ha happen, I think is, um, is really important. And a lot of people felt that way too. So wish I'd stay in touch with friends. That was another one. Uh, you know, I, I'm from Seattle, but I've you know, lived in Austin for 15 years. There's a lot of friends that I have up in, in Seattle that I haven't really connected with in a long time. And uh, when I do, it's awesome. You know, we just kind of pick up where we left off and stuff and share um, our lives. But, you know, there's, there's still, uh, it's interesting that, you know, just being in touch with friends and um, looking at social interactions, uh, sometimes in my case, like, you know, maybe spending time with, um, with people that don't encourage you and you know uh, so just kind of maybe reframing and focus that's part of focus too is like shifting that so that you're actually um, spending more time with the people that you really care about in your life to, and then uh, I wish I had let myself be happier that one's a big that was actually one of the reasons that I wrote the book um, because you know I use a lot of football analogies in the book, but I, I feel, because I, the, the passion of mine is, is the game, but whether you like it or not, whether you like that sport or not, I wanted to, I couched it in sort of like a metaphor, but um, you know, my, my commitment is that you'd still get something valuable up for yourself from reading the book. And so I use the analogy, if you look like a football field, there's, you know, there's the comfort zone at one end, or you know, there's two zones, right? The two end zones, comfort zone, and then the fun zone. And I think as a society, we spend way too much time in the comfort zone. And that's where, you know, cynicism, resignation, frustration, anger, depression even, um, and anxiety is. And, you know, I think, 
it's really important work for us to get to the other end of the you know, get to the other end of the stadium, get to the other, you know, get to the fun zone, live from that. And what does that take? Um, and so that's just basically exploring that throughout the book and, and different, you know, strategies and things to look at to do that, to be able to live from your, your fun zone and basically be passionate and happy um, as a way of being, like as a, as a creation. I think uh, a lot of times in life, you know, we play the game of life backwards from what I have observed. Like, we think, you know, if I'm going to um, basically, you know, to have X, Y, and Z, you, you know, you start there and you want to have it. And so it's really just playing from the outside in versus the, uh, from the inside out versus the outside in. So it's really just basically saying, I'm going to, whatever I want to be, as Gandhi said, be the change that you want to see in the world. So start from that and generate that and have it be from inside out and playing that. Um, it, but it, you know, it's like, so how do you do that though? Like if that was, it was that easy, like we just do it, right? Um, and so there's some things that we're, we got to have to be willing to give up in order to be able to, to access that. And so, we, you know, I look at that in the book, we explore that and, uh, and and talk about it but uh yeah just going from playing the game from you know outside in versus um uh inside out and just being able to play the game from the inside out is really really i think important to to generate like who you want to be in life so we're going to look at uh because i remember i told you i don't really uh believe in just presentation kind of things. I think it's really gonna, I, I'm committed that everybody here gets value for the time being here. And I think one of the reasons to do that is just to take a look at your, um, your own experience and be able to uh, you know, be able to create what, um, what you, something valuable for. So tonight's really, really gonna be impactful and valuable for you. That's what I'm committed to. So anyway, take a couple of minutes and speculate, write uh, maybe some things that at this point in your life that you regret, that you have some reservations about. And this could be something like an area of your life that's not working or maybe not working as well as you'd like, or an area where you feel a loss of power, a loss of freedom, a loss of self-expression. So we're just going to look at any any regrets that come up out of what we just did so for yourself and it could be maybe an area of your life that's working that's not working as well as you'd like it to or um, maybe it's an area that you feel some kind of loss of power freedom or self-expression you know you don't feel like you're um, able to express yourself in that or feel suppressed or um, you know whatever's there for you so any anything any, any kind of loss of power freedom or self-expression Maybe it's an area where you're not feeling like you're being true to yourself. Maybe you're in a, a career that you don't feel lit up by or passionate about or um, want to spend some more time to be creative, you know, explore that side of yourself or there's a part of you that wants to come out that hasn't yet. You need some more time? Are you, everyone's got it? Got it? All right, so turn to the person next to you and take a couple minutes to just share what you... If, if you feel comfortable doing that, um, we c I can share with you if you want, or um, if you don't, just turn to your person and just maybe share a little bit about what, what's there and introduce yourselves. And Well, I'm committed that we actually, you know, by identifying those, my, my intention of that was, you know, to, to have kind of a structure and a, and a foundation to see what, what, maybe one area that you want to take some ground on. and. To, to actually, um, we got some amazing stuff coming out of, out of our conversation. It was great. Uh, I want to circulate this. So this is going to be what, what I, it's a way to kind of take one of the things that you found out of that process and actually put it on the court to, you know, make an action, um, identify sort of what you, by focusing on what it is that you actually want, right? So we're going to pass out this called Passion Playlist. So it's going to be uh, on the left-hand side, there's going to be a... Uh, a column where you can identify 
uh, identify your passions. And these can be things you know you had as a kid, or maybe you, you know just forgot about, or haven't done. And then there's, there's next column over that's importance to you. So on a scale from zero, it's not important at all, to ten, it's really, 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 really important. And then the other item is frequency. So zero, I don't hardly do it at all. Ten is like I do it, you know, all the time. And then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, do the difference between importance and frequency. So we take a, a couple of minutes. We're going to do that. And this will be a way to actually take whatever the, that came up in the last exercise as far as a regret. Maybe there's an area that's important to you, but you're not in action on. It's not, you know, and so we'll actually take um, a, an, actual, an action step towards that. It doesn't, you know, Martin Luther King once said, you don't have to see the whole staircase, you just see the first step. So I think a lot of times it's just like taking that first step, some kind of action that we can do and, and actually putting it into our scheduling systems or something like that. So that's what I'm committed to do is everybody leaves here with something about, you know, what maybe tomorrow what they're going to do or maybe even tonight, you know, like what, what kind of action step they want to take. So if you go ahead and just pass those around, I don't think there should be enough for everybody. hope there is. So this is a passion place. So... Uh, so when you get it, yeah, just take a few minutes, write down some of the things that passion about. So I, you know, I have reading, you know, on the beach, time with the kids, writing. Um, it could be, I mean, anything. And then once you have, you know, a couple of things, just even if it's just one or, or two or whatever, then just, um, you know, speculate on how important that item is to you. And and really look at how often you're doing it now. Again, you know, zero is I'm never doing it, 10 is I'm, I'm doing it off quite often. And then once you have the importance and the frequency, frequency, then just subtract importance from frequency. So if this was, let's say it's, a, it's important, it's really, really important to 10, and you don't do it ever, it's a 10. If it's maybe an eight and yeah, if it, you know, so maybe it's, and then maybe if it's uh, like eight, and then you, you do it kind of a little bit, like a, let's say three or four. If it's three, then, you know, it's five. The difference is five. It's four, it's four. So, ideas we're just kind of, kind of, kind of quantifying activities that are really, you're passionate about and really important to you, and yet maybe you're not doing very much of them. You know, you're not, um, they're important to you, and, and you're not doing them. And, very often. So we'll take a look at one, maybe one or two of them that you really want to focus on and just identify an action step that you could take inside of that. Something you could do maybe, you know, tomorrow or today, tonight or whenever. Okay, so now identify one, one of these where the difference was, you know, it just I'll let you decide, like, you know, at, at point, maybe it's over six, maybe it's a over seven, maybe it's a eight or nine, ten. Um, but it's something that's clearly important that you're not doing very often, you'd like to do more of. And just choose one. And below the, or on the other side of the thing, either below, um, if you have some space on that uh, passion playlist side, or maybe you flip it over, there's... Um, you can just start writing and speculating like what is an action that you could take. So like if it's reading, for example, you're not maybe spending enough time reading, you could set aside half day to read, um, you know, download one of 100 free books on Kindle, join a library, join a book club. If it's, you know, maybe you want to write um, a book or something, you could, you know, join a, join a writing, bless you, join a writing group, uh, um, you know, buy a book on writing, uh, reach out, do a meetup group, uh, something like that. If it's going to the beach, it's, you know, you could research Airbnb or something, find a, a, a property on the beach, um, maybe book a beach holiday, you know, fill your home up with things that remind you of the seaside, um, look for beachside, beachside properties, you know. Does everyone have at least one, one thing that they've identified? A passion and then kind of figure out the difference between the two and come up with uh, maybe some action that you can take, something that you could do and put in your, in your schedule and system in the next couple of days to actually be in action on something that's, that's important to you. I think I left 
passion and the things I, I think I should do is yeah. what I start putting something down. I don't know, maybe is that right? The things that you should do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that I want to That you want to do or that, uh, yeah. yeah. Or the, it's not really a passion. So is there something on there? That, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I mean. Yeah, and that will sometimes come up, like right? Completing some program that I started that I never did complete. And <laughs> not right. Really something that I was passionate about, maybe. But. Yeah, well, it's interesting. Um, I don't know if you've heard Raymond Aaron, but he talks a lot about um, procrastination as actually a signal and an intuition that maybe that's not something that we're very, you know, lit up about doing. So that's why we're that's why we're putting it off. It's just some interesting. Uh, Raymond Aaron. Raymond yeah. Double your income doing what you love. It's a great goal setting kind of book. But he talks about, um, yeah, he talks about uh, procrastination. And, you know, usually we resist it and make it wrong, but like it's totally reframing it. Like, oh, okay. I'm resisting it because maybe I'm, you know, not passionate about it or whatever. So, yeah. I guess right. that's part of my confusion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, maybe, and that's just maybe something to look at without, you know, like the biggest thing too, I think is just to not resist, just be really curious. I, you guys, I have found curiosity is like one of the best states to, to generate and to be come from like whatever is coming up. Um, it, in my experience, it's like the keys to the transformational kingdom. Like if you just get curious about something like, wow, I'm resisting that. I'm really like, I've been, that's come up a couple times and I've, you know, I've seen that and I haven't done anything on it. What's up with that? You know, just like really just being the inquiry of it, not, not without, without judgment, without resistance or anything, just like kind of hang out with it and see what comes up. Your intuition will more than likely provide a, a real good. I like that. Yeah. So yeah, curiosity is actually one of the, one of the tools I talk a lot about in this book. Cause I, I think curiosity is just one of the best states to be in. Um, when we were kids, we were curious about everything. We explored and looked at and didn't, you know, if we scuffed up our knees, so what? You know, but let's just check it out. What's with this? And and I think we lose a lot of that when we get older, you know, it's just a sense of wonder and awe and, and really, um, you know, from my experience, like I would start going into something like I already know that and, or, oh, I've, I've been there, done that, I've, you know, I already know that. As, as an adult, you know, we, we kind of do that sometimes because I think that's, I mean, sometimes it's useful, right? But most of the time it kind of, from my experience, blocks me from learning new things and really getting the most out of, out of life. So I've kind of been taking on like the beginner's mind. What would that look like if I just, if I didn't know, it? you know, mm -hmm. even if it's something I've maybe been exposed to or, you know, maybe have done before like well what if i or a new per a person too you know it's like oh that's just the way she is or that's just the way he is well what if what if that person was new every day you know what if you could create that mm -hmm. as a as a possibility in your relationship like what would open up like what if that wasn't how they always did things you know because i'm just bringing a beginner's mind to it and so i'm i've been playing around a lot with that lately it's really it's amazing um when I don't pre bring my preconceived notions to a conversation or to somebody else, you know, and they don't have to, and it kind of gives them a freedom to be however they want to be, and, and it gives me a freedom. So it's just really, I found that it's really opened up um, relationships with, with other people. All right, so yeah, we pick at least one thing, schedule it. So a, a couple of other things that I, I found really useful. Um, in terms of actually putting actions on and pursuing what it is that you're passionate about. So I've got this marble notebook. It's, you know, you can get them at any, you know, CVS, uh, Walgreens, HEB, whatever. It's, um, I like the ones with three holes. I didn't get this one for that, but they have three holes and you can put it in a three ring, uh, ring binder if you want. But, and just put like maybe some images that really call to you, you know, almost like a, um, story you know some kind of a um images on the front or just i just have a kind of a simple thing things to do before i die and just start writing like all the things that you'd like to to do it's amazing i've, I've gone i made a list and i started started writing in the date of when i you know maybe did that and check it off but it's kind of been growing over the years but it's just been a lot of fun to have that and if i'm sort of like looking at well what do i 
what should I be in action on? What would be really interesting for me to do? I just look through this and I get, you know, I get some good ideas. So that's, that's another kind of a structure or practice that if it calls to you, you can do. And then another thing I really, really recommend is, um, is journaling. Have you, um, I haven't even heard of, uh, of Julia Cameron. Yeah. Oh, you're the artist way? Are you reading that? Yeah, the, or the right to write is another. The artist, the artist way is whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. That, that book changed my life. And actually, she, um, we had the opportunity to interview. She, she's in the, in the program. Yeah, and I was just blown away by it because she doesn't usually do interviews since for some reason. Like, when you're, when you're open to the process, I'm, I've just been blown away by like, and, and um, when I'm willing to give up my attachment to how it's supposed to look and just, you know, be open, the universe comes up with way, way better ideas about how things should, you know, should be presented or whatever and, and brings the people that need to come to a project be, before. That's my experience. And uh, like I, that was, that came totally out of, out of just being open and because she doesn't normally do that. But anyway, her artist way uh, in there, she has a thing, one of her core deals is called the morning pages. So it's basically you just get up and just start, you know, um, two to three pages, usually do like two pages of just free form stream of consciousness writing. It's just like whatever comes up. Boy, my head's really, it's really pounding right now. I don't know. Uh, what is that? I'm dehydrated. I don't know. Like whatever is that, it's just kind of a brain. It's just sort of channels kind of whatever you're thinking, feeling, uh, out and it's amazing to me. I, when I first started, I was like, I've done this for several years now, and I was thinking, well, oh, you know, what, <coughs> what good can that do? Like, it just seems like I'm inventing, I'm ranting, or whatever. And uh, and then after doing this for a certain number of months, and all of a sudden, like, oh, I kind of have a desire to sit down and write, you know, and um, or I, I want to you know, start learning to play, um, you know, a musical instrument maybe or something like that. Like there's just things that started coming up and, uh, and I'm convinced it was because of that. Just get all that stuff out and get in the habit of um, doing some kind of structure. And yeah, the, so the morning pages is really great. Also the artist date is another one that she talks about where you set, set a, it's kind of along lines of what I talk about too is basically a play date. You know, you just you schedule time for yourself doing something that you really are interested in doing and want to do uh, once a week. So we talk about get curious. I, I think if uh, there's a saying I absolutely love that, uh, you know, it's basically a person is either green and growing or they're ripe and rotting. <laughs> and you know so I, I just kind of prefer to go green I mean that's just like you know so just always be open and be willing to uh, you know be willing to see yourself newly and other people you know like assumptions about how things should or shouldn't be like just be open to um, well what if it wasn't that way start asking yourself you know questions just really being in the inquiry of it and uh, yeah curiosity has changed my life I I love to interview people. And so like for me, curiosity, that's been a great way for me to um, really get into someone else's world, experience what, they, what they're passionate about, and I get to learn about that. And, and basically, you know, curiosity as a state of being, being curious has really changed my life. Um, and I think if you were to do only one thing out of this whole thing tonight, if you were just to be open to being curious about things that maybe you know you've you've seen regularly but you know maybe you look at them newly i mean what that would be like for you to open up so uh learn backwards so take this is a perfect time to be in this inquiry so we're in november right it's coming up we're gonna have um christmas is coming up pretty soon and then the new year new year's resolutions and all that so so right now is like a great time to just look at, all right, well, what do I really want to learn in 2018? You know, is it, I mean, the list could be really long, but, um, you know, do I want to learn how to do a podcast? Do I want to learn how to write? Do I want to learn how to, um, I mean, you know, garden to sail? What, I mean, the list is endless. So just, you know, make a list of what you want to learn in 2018. And then I'd say, 
basically learn backwards. And then, you know, you can always add to the list, right? But I'm just saying from this point right here, it's like a snapshot. You say, all right, these, these are the things I want to learn in 2018. And, um, and then take those things and then say, all right, well, what do I want to learn in the first three months, first quarter? What do I want to learn in, you know, the first, first month, second month, third month? And then, so you start kind of breaking it down and then just take, take a couple of things and, and schedule them, you know, for each week. I, th I find that having an existence system some type for me it's it's scheduling it actually putting it on my calendar blocking time so f for writing was a was a perfect example so i you know wanted to write a book for a really long time and i just kept like putting it off and other th stuff other stuff right just kept coming up and oh, I'll, just, I'll i'll do it later you know and just kept putting it off putting it off well what was missing for me was a, a structure some kind of a system where i could actually put it down block out the time um stephen came by he has a great book on writing and he uh he <laughs> he blocks out in the morning for like a project that he's working on now and then the evening blocks out a couple hours for a project that he's that he's researching or that he's doing so he's actually got two two times but you know we're not Stephen King really so I mean, as far as writing goes so maybe you know four hours a day or whatever isn't isn't optimal for you but I mean like just the idea is just to, like whether it's 30 minutes 20 minutes um, find the time you know to, to actually sit down and if it's writing just you know put the butt in the chair and and do it you know just right. lock 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 the hours yeah the, the right's right. right yeah writers right, writers right. yeah or it's painting, or if it's you know taking a photo, f photography, or you know what, whatever that is for you that you're you know passionate about, just um, schedule it for yourself. Block out some time, some time in the day to do that. Yeah, Stephen King cracks me up. He has this thing where he was saying when he first started, he <laughs> he had a little um, letter, you know those those spikes you put a letter on, like when whatever they're. <laughs> He said, got to the point he got so many rejection letters, he actually got a railroad spike. Like, he just had it up on his desk and he would just put like these letters on the thing. Uh, yep. Glad he didn't give up. That would be... So, all right. So, yeah, make a list. All right. So, the next F word we're going to look at is... Forgiveness. So... Um, you know, and I, this, this is a, this can be a tough one. Like, um, going through life with, you know, grudges about somebody and because we, we often collapse forgiveness with, well, if I forgive them, then I'm going to, I actually feel like I'm kind of condoning or what they did or, you know, I mean, there's some things and people probably in this room have experienced some pretty, um, you know traumatic things and so i'm not i'm not trying to make light of that all i'm saying is that um you know forgiveness is really a gift that you give yourself um you know i came from a um my mother was an alcoholic and uh she would just like usually was it an event like a birthday party or a um uh now in the holidays you know if she'd be drinking and then her mood would be go from like you know this to like 180 degree opposite like, and it was just like it was off-putting you know and so i think i so i most of my life growing up i would be like you know when's the other shoe gonna drop kind of thing and i was really hesitant about that and so it, I, it and i was unable to you know i made her wrong for a long time like i i didn't really um and i was unable to kind of forgive her about that and really look at what what might she have been experiencing in her life to that caused that you know and 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 it was through a program that i did um back in 1998 called the landmark forum where i really got that you know it was just a story that i made up that i was kind of creating and i was unwilling to get off of it you know i was making her wrong based on something you know and i was unable to to you know forgive her and that was really just costing me it was costing me in relationships big time because you know I wasn't like trusting and and then also probably not you know being open to people and and stuff and so when I was willing to have a conversation with her it was not a easy conversation to have but like just um, 
being willing to do that and be open and, and just and then forgive her, you know, just say, look, you know, I, I love you, you know, and I know that that's a space that, that you're going through and that we, you know, and I'm actually looking at, you know, reframing in, in, inside of this, like, um, it's actually those, those situations that are the most difficult that um, Marsha Weider calls them our sacred wounds that actually we have the greatest opportunity to heal and grow from. And so, uh, you know, provided we're willing to, to do this, you know, and it's, and it's challenging. I'm not, so I'm not making light of that. And, but what I'm saying is like, whatever there is for that, you know, it's just, it makes it um, a lot more challenging to, to live a life full out and to be self-expressed if you've got grudges and resentments and things. And again, it, it doesn't mean that you're forgiving or condoning what they did. I mean, you know, you, but you're just targeting the behavior, not the, not the person. And basically just being willing to forgive, you know, whatever that they did or didn't do. So it's really kind of a, a it's just a grace and a gift that you give yourself. And, um, you know, grant yourself. I think forgiving yourself is really, that's been one that I've been struggling with most of my life and just being able to, you know, forgive myself for something I did or didn't do or, um, you know, that's been a challenge for me as well. But um, it's really the, the get out of the emotional jail free card is what I like to think of you know, forgiveness. Uh, so just, you know, take a look at any area and maybe a person in your life that you've really been able to, um, to forgive about something. You know, maybe you hold a grudge with them or there's something there. And so, because I'm really grateful that I had that conversation with my mom because I mean, you know, she, she passed so quickly and I didn't feel when she passed that there was anything that I hadn't said or done, you know, in terms of just being able to express how I, how much I loved her and, and there wasn't that in the space, you know what I mean? There wasn't like this kind of holding back and resisting. And uh, so I'm really, really grateful for, for that and being able to have those kind of conversations. Um, so yeah, I just, that's the invitation is, you know, and, and I know it's, it can be challenging and it also means that, you know, some, for a short term, there's some, maybe some discomfort that's gonna come up inside of that conversation or so it's just kind of a willingness and an openness to be with that the discomfort that you know that charge because you know we, for a long time i wanted to make her wrong and you know make myself right and all that and there was a charge there like i had to actually look at that and be willing to sit with it and not um not go there you know not just, just let it be there without resistance and without judgment and through that you know you, you kind of you were able to you know transform it so What's there on the long term, um, for me, what I found is just, you know, being, being willing and being open and being vulnerable and um, being willing to, um, you know, peace of mind. There's a saying, you know, you can either be right or you can have peace, choose. You know, you can be right or you can have love, choose. You, you can't have both. So if you want to be positional on something, that's, that's great. You're going to get some benefit out of it. I mean, nations go to war over being right and making someone, you know, some other country wrong. But, so there's a lot of charger and there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of stuff, but there's also a cost, you know? So if there's something you really are finding difficult letting go of, I, you know, I would just look at, well, maybe there's something either that you're having trouble with in yourself letting go of, or, um, you know, what are the costs? And what are the benefits I'm getting out of this? And what are the costs? So like I said, you know, with my mom, for example, I was able to be right and make her wrong and, um, also kind of get off the hook responsibility wise like oh that's I don't you know I'm not gonna open up because I don't know how that person's gonna show up but once I had to kind of front well that's just my made-up thing now all of a sudden I have to you know be willing to be open with somebody or whatever and it's like well, that's not really comfortable because what if I get hurt or you know what like all that stuff comes up so there's um but what's available on the other side is it was just you know, it's huge like there's so there's happiness and peace of mind and um, just really being able to be with another person and knowing them because we really don't know when the piece of people in our life are, you know, they could be not here tomorrow. So uh, whatever there is, you know, inside of that 
for you. Um, I just invite you to just really look at it and be willing to, to forgive them. And, you know, it might take getting some coaching or help around having those kind of conversations and being willing to see what's in the blind spot. <clears throat> for me, it was a landmark forum. Um, I, I can't recommend that enough. That's a, I mean, it's a great, it's a great, the best money I've ever spent on a weekend. But, uh, you know, it maybe, maybe you can see, you know, there's somebody that you could go see. But, you know, just find someone that maybe could help you through that and, and do that. Now, um, so who, is there, is there someone here that's have maybe, is there something that you're not able to forgive or there's something that's come up in your life that, it's been challenging for that for you. I know it's so Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. I'll hurt back to the last one a little bit. Sure. Keep in mind, but, um, so I ha I'm amused to have one that uh, is not very important, but I spent all my time doing it. <laughs> so I have a negative on the difference. Oh, you do? Okay. Uh, any insights on that one? <laughs> on something that's, n that's, um, yeah, I mean, I think we can all relate to that, right? There's things that aren't, that may be busy activities or things that aren't really important that... Oh, well, I like to do it. Just, you know, learning and studying, learning and studying all the time. Uh-huh. More than need, much more than necessary. <laughs> well, I mean, if as long as you're getting joy out of it, I mean, I don't... It kind of blocks me from all the other things I enjoy and are productive, both. Learning to do things. And then not doing them. <laughs> <laughs> ah, learn. So the process of learning it and then not doing it. Yeah, yes. yeah. Learning about something new. Yeah. Is one yeah. Of the I wrote down. Yeah. Because I just love it when I I read an article or something and it's like I didn't know that before. Yeah. And I because I, I think as all old people I think I already know everything. <laughs> so when I find something new, it's really exciting. But you know, then what do you do with it? Right. It, yeah. It, yeah. Knowledge isn't really. Um, Knowledge is, you know, can be interesting and good, but it's it, like, you know, if, let's take riding a bike, for example. Like, let's say you don't know how to ride a bike and you really learn and study everything there is to, to learn about riding a bike. So you know, you know, how the, the mechanism works, you know, the bike, you know, all these different kinds of bikes, you know, all the gear systems, you know, you know, everything there is to know about a bike. And then there's an eight-year-old kid who Actually, but you've never ridden a bike, so you don't, you know, you don't know, you don't have the distinction balance, you don't know, you know, you really don't know how to ride a bike. Yeah. So that's experiential, and that's actually um, the eight-year-old kid who's riding by and doing, you know, <laughs> probably jumps and stuff on his bike. He's a bike rider. He's actually being a bike rider, right? Yeah. And so I think, I think there's a lot, because I'm the same way, like I like to learn stuff, and, but... I often some, you know, I won't maybe not put it into practice, or I won't be being that. So whether whether it is like if it's um, whatever it is that you maybe you're learning, you know, are you actually being that out in the world, or so? And it, it, well, like, I, and, then, and, then, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just like it, you know, then the question would be, well, you know, is there is there one of these things that I'm that I'm learning about that I really want to dive into and and be. So, so then, the, then, then the, the inquiry is looking at what that, that gap, you know, like taking action. Yeah. It's probably then something that to look at, you know, just like, okay, well, I'm going to pick one and I'm just going to, I'm actually going to do it, you know, like I'm going to ride the bike in this area, whatever that, met, you know, for, his, for that area. Does that help? <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> you know, one of the things I came up with is we were just chatting afterward and I remember something that happened to me when I was 13 and it's sort of like this me too thing that happened uh -huh. um, where it was my brother-in-law and my dad said don't tell anybody it's too much trouble in the family we just keep it quiet and I didn't say anything and that's the one I could like to undo mm. or redo because you know that's a regret and he went on to be you know pretty toxic to a lot of people and mm. so I think the world is changing right now. Yeah. A lot of 13 year olds find themselves in that position now will be believed. Mm. You know, yeah. Speak up. But yeah, the world is a, a terrible mm. place for a lot of people. And um, this kind of exercise dredges up a lot. 
Well, I mean, thank you for being so open and sharing that because that yeah. really opens up a lot for, for me and I'm sure most of the people in the room. You know, well, you know it's really yeah. weird because nothing really happened because I was too fierce and just like, you know, got rid mm -hmm. of But I know now that he, other people weren't able to like do that. Right. And, um, so there's some guilt there that maybe if I would have said something yeah, that wouldn't have happened. Like, yeah. Like, um, why is it that people <coughs> have kind of condoned this for so long? What's wrong with the human race? Sorry, I went to a dark place. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's. Um, it's really awful. Yeah, you know, I, I think. Uncomfortable to deal with. I just want. I hope it goes away. Yes, yeah, so we've been under the rug, or yeah, that yeah. brings it to the forgiveness thing. It's yeah. like if something, I can't forgive somebody for something that actually did not happen. I can't forgive him for what he did to the other people. Mm. You know what is forgiveness when you really get down to it? It's internal, like you said. Yeah. It doesn't have any effect on the behaviors of other people. Mm. Yeah, I, I like to think of it like, um, you know, holding grudges and resentments is kind of like you taking poison and you wait for someone else to die, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I mean, that's how it lives for me. Like, uh, I like to think of it like that as, um, you know, but just poisons and effects. It's a process to do. Oh, yeah. You know I mean? it yeah. It doesn't happen always sure. easily. <laughs> nope. Yeah. You're right. But, you know, what's what's available on the other side is tremendous, yeah. you know, oh, peace yeah. of mind and, and, and happiness. And it's just hard to kind of go through life be, being self-expressed if there's like you know a lot of resentments and you forgive and still ignore <laughs> oh yeah well i actually talked you know like one of the things you could do if you really actually didn't want to have a conversation with the person one thing that i've done before too that's been really effective is is just you write a letter and say basically all the things that you know that you want to say on that and um and then you read it out a lot to yourself and then you burn it um that's that's a pretty good I mean, that's, that's been a pretty powerful process. So anyway, we were talking about just looking at the, the costs and the benefits, or the costs and the payoff of, uh, you know, not being able to forgive somebody. You know, so you might look at just something like being, being right, being justified, making something wrong. It's a tremendous charge there as far as wanting to hold on to something. And then also that idea that, oh, if I do that, I, that's going to mean that I'm condoning it. And that's not what we're saying. We're not saying it's condoning or that they they were right or anything. It's just that it's a kind of a gift that you give yourself, a gift and a grace that you give yourself. The last F word. Fun. <laughs> word. Fun. Gandhi, be the change you want to be in the world. So be fun. Generate being beingness of fun, whatever that looks like for you. You know, if there's something that you uh want to be in action on you know be that and bring fun and play and passion to it and a good way i, I found that uh, man your intuition and access rather than you know where we get into trouble i, I can speak for myself uh is whenever i resist something right I resist it or i push it away or i'm attached to expectation about something looking a certain way but if you, you can use curiosity, like I said before, to actually flip something. So um, if I'm being, if I want to be fun, for example, and access to that is noticing whenever I'm not being that, right? I'm feeling resigned, I'm feeling cynical, I'm feeling, you know, frustrated, angry, whatever that is. So, you know, you can, you can use those times and actually if you're noticing and, and training yourself to notice your own consciousness about where I am right now, like who am I being who's feeling this way and starting to observe the thoughts, you know, being a witness rather than getting tangled up in, in the actual thoughts. Um, getting, getting in the habit of like looking at whenever you're not being a certain way is a really great access to, um, to being how you want to be, if that makes any sense. So um, what we talked about earlier, the inside out versus outside in and, and being really intentional um, versus being kind of a reaction to, you know, to life. So mm. there's the stadium and there's the field. So we're spending too much time here and we want to get over there. So my invitation is, you know, really, you guys, I, I really want to acknowledge you guys for the time that you took and 
being here and just being so generous with your time. And I know, you know there's a lot of things you could be doing on a Tuesday, but you chose to be here. And I really um, sincerely wanted this time to be valuable and impactful for you. That's why we took you know, some time to do those exercises and, and stuff like that. And um, just so in closing, I, you know, I really feel from my heart, I want you guys just to play full out in the second half and, and just um, you know, give yourself permission to play full out and, and just you know, make the whole world your playground. I mean, that's really where uh, what we're, our birthright, you know, we just need to get back to that. So thank you guys for, yeah, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.